how are you? April 23rd, 2019, Enzo DiCostanzo, Clinical Professor of Economics and Finance at St. Peter's University. Today, we're going to be going over the merchandising operations question, so this should help you with your uh, final exam preparation. So let's get to the Excel spreadsheet. We'll be posting this on Blackboard, and this is a substitute for the classes on the 24th and 25th of April. This is supposed to take the place of, of, of those classes. Okay, folks, you should have this template, and I'll, like I said, I'll put this on Blackboard, and I'll send it to everybody. Uh, yeah, so we're to the brief exercise. Actually, this is the, the template, and actually, we may even do some of the review exercises uh, if we have a few minutes, because I have about two hours where I can, I can spend uh, working on this. In the textbook, we're here, and it's PDF page 240, um, and uh, pretty close, yeah, 239, 240. Uh, the actual the physical page is 239 for the view of the, the physical textbook and 240 for the PDF folks. Uh, and we, there's a uh, 13 yeah 13 questions. And we'll go over 10 minutes of questions. So that should be about not, just about the amount of time that I have to go over this. Um, I'm going to go over the objectives very quickly. Just I'm just going to run through through these: uh, computing missing amounts and determining net income, journalizing perpetual inventory entries, journalizing the sales transactions. Journalizing purchase transactions, prepare adjusting entries for merchandising inventory, prepare closing entries for merchandising accounts, prepare sales revenue section of income statement, contrast presentation, and multi step and single step income statements, compute net sales, gross profit income from operations and gross profit rate, and compute the net purchases and cost of goods purchased, compute the cost of goods sold and gross profit, journalize purchase transactions, identify worksheet columns for selected accounts. Okay? So you have, and like the reviews might be another video. Maybe, maybe at the end of the day, I, I, we can make another video for those. Okay, so the first question here uh, presented below are the components from Miller Company. Determine the missing amounts. It's revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expenses, net income. Very basic, and you know a lot of your models are going to have those, and you're, you're going to convince people to make this investment and that investment. And uh, if it's you know, direct you know economic investment. Then you certainly you're going to want to you're going to have something like this constructed so people know the component they're plugging into their investment system and what they're getting out of it and the percentage of the, of the company that they own, the percentage of the profits that they're going to be getting. So this is very critical to to all that. Um, and as usual, I have both. I have everything here. I have the, the solutions here. Let me just quickly get to my solutions. Oops, I apologize. That's loud. <clears throat> Hey, we did self-test in class. Yeah, there's brief exercises. I'm gonna uh, you know, have a small version of this, sort of just to, off to the side as, as we've been having in the past. And we just sort of scrunch that over here as we need it. This should be the bigger, more important version of, of what, we're, what we're looking at here. Uh, we're here with the brief exercises. Yeah, make that look small. Oops, make that look smaller so you can see what we're talking about here. Yeah, there it is. Okay, and like I said, we'll we'll move this around as needed. Okay, uh, and you're given some pieces of this. What are you given? Now I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have the paper copy here, just sort of next to me. So I'm just going to, you know, just for the ease of it, I'm going to flip through it as we're, as we're doing this. Yeah. So you have, you're supposed to have. Uh, revenue, sales revenue, seventy-five thousand. Gross profit, thirty. Again, I, I worked on. I'm sure I, there, was a, there was a class too where we worked on this. So let's get rid of all the gray. Okay. You don't have allowances. You don't have and and to the zero, folks, zero is a number like like any other number. There's seventy-five thousand in terms of revenue. Uh, so your net sales number is equal to the sum. Of the 75, comma, negative, the returns and allowance, comma, the discounts. So it should be 75,000 right there. Uh, or you could do this equal sum. I think we've done this in the past like that, and just, you know, instead of making them both negative, you just subtracted this little subtotal there. That may that may also work. We're given operating expenses, or I'm saying we're, we're searching for operating expenses, but. Uh, we're given gross profit is thirty thousand. 
Okay, so we here we have to get to 30,000 is, is what we have to do. So if we entered, let's say, negative 45, just sort of doing the math in our heads, and said equal some parenthesis. Ah, there's your 30,000. Actually, I entered this. Okay, it is, but it was really I, yeah, I, I computed it to be very, very honest with you. But that's you know, this is important. This any time you're convincing someone to invest, you know, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars in something, you've got to have some sort of cash flow. What's going to happen, right? Always income statement, the company, what it is, the dates, starting and ending. You need it. You need it. Uh, we don't have operating expenses, but we have net income is ten thousand eight hundred. So if this was negative nineteen thousand two hundred. I think we would get the number that we're searching for. Yeah, there's your 10,800. So yeah, so how we did that is you know, if you're given, you know, what are we looking for? You're looking for this one, right? You were looking for that guy and you were looking for that guy. You're the, all, the, all the sort of the core expenses stuff. So what you're doing, if you're given this, you can just sort of on the side here, you can say equals... 30 minus the 75 is your minus 45. And if you're given you know, this minus this, it's minus 19, right? Which is that, that's, I, but I, we back those out. Okay, but there's a couple of these. So this is good practice to, to, to you know, continually drill you know, through all this. The next one gives you, and again, I put the gray in just to remind me so I don't go completely mad. You know, what to enter and all those other things. And to making sure that, yeah, we're, we're consistent with what we've done in the past here. This is from perpetual inventory system. We just put a little note in there. This is 108,000. Cost of goods sold was minus 70. Okay, these guys, this was zero. This is zero equals some. Again, if there were non-zero numbers there, you just add those in there and subtract them. So net sales is, is that plus this is just happens to be 108. You're given okay, of course it's all the seven. So from that gross profit is thirty-eight thousand consistent. We don't know operating expenses, but we know net income is twenty-nine five hundred. So if this was negative eighty-five hundred. Equals um, right. That's twenty nine thousand, which, which is right there. You don't know these two, right? Those two you don't know. Okay. Actually, you can get rid of those. Do that. Save as we go. But yeah. So. Uh, that's what you have here. That's your net income. Okay, and like said, we're just validating all the numbers as the you know, the structure of this. And you're given if there's bits and pieces missing. So gross profit we just computed, right, from everything that was computed, and then expenses. This is just that minus that, right? That's your, that's how you got minus eighty five thousand, eighty five hundred rather. Okay, and there's a C to this thing. We don't know sales revenue, but cost of goods sold is minus that we know minus eighty three nine hundred, and we know what the profit should be thirty nine five hundred. Minus thirty nine five hundred. Operating expenses are that. Okay, so we have all those. Um, <laughs> this is 79 gross profits is or, or minus or is a 79 600 that is so going back to net oops. yeah going back to the net it would be You're adding that, right? That's your 163,500. And actually, we should probably do that here. You're just adding these two. The cost of it's all the gross profit is that. We want to get to this, is, is what we want to do. 
we know that these two are zero, zero. That's, just, that's a nothing transact, nothing computation is that. But we don't have sales though. Well, this is net sales is 163. So this is 163,500. So this equals the sum of that comma. We have all those. That's our 163. So we validated that gross profit. I could just come up here, copy, which is in there. All right, 70 to 9,600. And this final one, is, we're just copying and pasting. Okay. So what didn't we know? We didn't know net income or loss, right? And we didn't know sales revenue. And then save all that. All right, so we, we uh, stream through the first three and you know computer the missing amounts. This is good. There's some jumping jacks, you know, getting this stuff done. Okay, the next one, number two, it says for a company, merchandise on account. So again, who buys what from who? You know, we care always care a lot about uh, all of that. Actually, here. Yeah, a lot of the, the fill sort of moved over on us. We're just cleaning that right now. And I inserted some stuff and moved some stuff around. Alt HHN. So who's buying what? This is by a company, buys merchandise from Murray, selling price is 780, cost gets over 470, user financial system. Yep. Okay, so we'll do that next. So this is gonna be yeah, again, the buyer, and he puts the cost in that he now again, you might say, oh, we've done this, we've done this with it. Folks, this shows up in other chapters. You don't just see this once and, and are done with it. So know this cold and then you're going to have you know, other stuff sort of piled on top of it from the other chapters. So just be, be prepared and ready for that. And, and forgetting about my course, but just learning it, learning your accounting. Um, you know, be prepared for that. But you have to learn the basics. Okay, this is how you do a, uh, a credit sale. And the, the buyer owes the seller or the supplier the 780. And then with the, now, yeah, so this is the buyer. So now this is the, the seller here. He's going to record his 780 as a receivable for him. So this is a nice, uh, you know, perspective on who who's, whose transaction is, is what here, and the, his costs are 470. Okay, those are the costs. So the difference in there, you know, you can look in here and just sort of subtract these. Right. 310, some kind of difference of about 310. Okay, I'm like, you can worry about that another time. But yeah, credit sale, cost merchandise, sold an invoice to a company, and there's a company that the buyer, who's the seller, the dates. Okay, and it says journalize the transaction of the books of both companies. All right, so we did that one. That's what that looks like. Yeah, this was number two, journalized sales. Oh, wow. We don't have the, I don't want to say the wrong one, but uh, maybe it's both of them. Yeah, okay. And this was for number two. Journalized, okay, that's fine. We did that one. And then three is. Yeah, three and four are, are sort of on top of each other. So, yeah, journalized purchase transactions. Journalized, yeah, we, we missed journalized sales transactions here. This is correct. And there should be sales transactions. Yeah, so like I said, you got to watch, myself included, I watch your notes. There's a lot of stuff going on here, so. 
Yeah, March 2nd. Okay. So we got to we always have to label everything. So three and four now, because that was number two. Okay, this was just you know the the, the the selling price and the cost gets sold and how the buyer journalizes, how the seller journalizes, the dates have to match and uh, all that. Okay, all the detail is matched. Three and four together, and it says prepare the journal entries to record the phone transactions from um, Derek, seller of the company's book using perpetual system. Uh, prepare the journal to record the buyers. Yeah, so sell three and four is seller and buyer again. Okay, we're, we're looking at that you know one more time. Okay. So I'm a little more complicated now. So you have sellers, Derek, and you know, label it who the seller is, you know, who the buyer is, Rose, company's the buyer. <coughs> and we're looking at a, you know, for the, so for the seller, right off the bat, he's got, you know, 900, one, two, three, 900,000. Sales revenue and his receivables are nine hundred thousand. That just comes from right there. Okay. Then you have terms. You have cost of merchandise. Okay. Again, the seller. Now his his cost of merchandise is going to be six twenty. And again, just you know, keep that. This is this is going to pop up in other chapters. There's a whole liabilities section. There's a whole uh, receivable section. There's a lot of stuff you need to. You're going to see this again. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and then it says. Um, Rose returned ninety thousand of the merchandise and the cost. So yeah, so ninety thousand was of the nine. So ten percent was returned, and ten, and luckily ten percent ten ten percent of the of the cost of goods sold. Same ratios. That doesn't always happen. So we have we scratch our heads in class often that those ratios are a little bit different sometimes. And what was returned was a little you know more expensive, less expensive. So and here's what you're doing here, and you know keep in mind with the receivables. Uh, for the seller, they have 900,000 receivables. If someone returns 10% of it, they have to write their receivables down. They can't just say, hey, someone still owes us because they accepted the goods back. And then the cost of inventory. So this must have, this must have been a very clean return because it's uh, the, the cost of goods sold ratio and the, uh, the sales ratio, the, the receivables ratio, all the same. Right? So this is 90 to 62, and this is 900 to 620, 10%. So those ratios are in line, which is unusual. Okay, that was the seller's piece of this. Uh, the buyer, okay, let's go to the buyer. His inventory increased by 900,000. Right, 900,000 there. Some of the inventory was returned, 90,000. Which is that? Okay. So we have made, we have shown how inventory gets represented, and then how, from the seller's perspective, is receivable. And, and notice here, it's a payable for this guy, it's a receivable for this guy, for the seller. Okay. So just keep those in mind. So you're here, you did all this. Now you have the term. So you made your return, fine. And then it says the the seller receives the balance due on the twelfth, which is ten days, just ten days later. I think I have a little note here. Yeah. So it's we're just in the in the discount period. And the discount is two percent. Or yeah, right there, two percent. And then the net within thirty days, of course. And yeah, we have uh, this guy's receiving the cash. This guy's paying the cash. Okay, so we have all that journalization to, to work on. We'll work on that right now. So the receivable is equal to uh, the nine your nine hundred thousand minus what was returned, which is the nine again. I subtract the actual receivables. Oops. Why is it doing that? Uh, right. And then you have a two percent discount on that. I've been doing little uh checks here to, to make sure of all this. There's a little checks and up here obviously the cash is the difference taken off the discount. He summed up eight eight hundred ten thousand dollars. Okay. 
this is the seller. He collected that cash, and then the buyer paid it. And um, yeah, and you know, all these same numbers, but just you know, sort of moved a bit. Yeah, we have a check here. All right, so all right, the payable is going to be uh, equal to. Nine hundred minus ninety thousand. That's eight ten. This is two percent times that, which is sixteen thousand two hundred, and the cash number is the difference there. Okay, that's the buyer. So they're obviously it's an outflow. It's a credit to their cash accounts. So they're paying it. All right, there's the fourth one. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, that's a very good one to, to look at and to use. Okay, you have a little complexity with uh, purchase terms, and discounts, and of course, good sold. Okay, so these are some nice examples from the chapter that should help you with the, uh, again, if you're in a section where this is used as an assignment or just for the final exam. But yeah, so for the, the afternoon section, this is very important that you guys sort of get your, your, your heads wrapped around this and, and watch these videos. Very important. All right, number five, it says perpetual inventory, blew a company, had merchandise in 90,000. And again, dealing with um, initial balances, that, that can drive you bananas. So always keep that in mind. With this one, though, this is where their paper records show 90,000 in inventory, and the company determined the actual inventory was 95,700. So you're recording a correction of the merchandise sold. Now, there's one, two things. Either you sold more than you thought, and there was a mistake, or somebody stole. Something's missing, or you never got it in the first place. All that. So, pick pick one of those reasons, and that's what happened. But yeah, so there's so you're you're reducing by two thousand three hundred to get to ninety five thousand seven hundred. Okay, that's adjusting interest for, for merchandise uh, inventory. Tibido is the following merchandising accounts. Number six. Yeah, and what happened here was uh, these are the closeout entries, right? So if you look at the bottom here, it says prepare closing entries for merchandising accounts. Okay, and I, I sort of gave you everything here, but you may not need it. Obviously, with now revenues normally uh, credit, but when you're closing it out, and you got, you've heard me say this in class many times, you know, Wendy's they don't count a hamburger that they sold in January. They don't count it in May. Right, May is fast approaching. Right, they don't do, do it like that. Okay, so you're closing out the revenue account there, and then you only have a couple expenses. You have a, a discount, which is generally debit, and you're going to turn that into credit for two thousand. Of course, get sold one seventeen. Is one hundred nineteen thousand. Closing income statement accounts with, with debit balances. Okay, you have that. So this is you close out your expenses, and now you got to figure out what goes into the bank account. And you know the entry point is the credit side, and, and I've said this across you know several classes. That's what's going on with the owner's capital account. Right? You, you got to figure out is this uh, income out? If this is positive, well, let's see, revenue one ninety five. Do, do using you could do using income summary uh, one ninety five. Expenses 119. So we're looking at an income here. So and, and the orientation of everything matters with that. Because if it's a loss, you've got to flip these. Right? If it's a loss, it's going to go in on the other side. So with capital, this goes into the account. If it's a loss, you're going to have capital here. So you can debit capital and credit summary to close out a net loss. But this is a net income. Okay, we don't have drawings. Okay, but yeah, that, that was a real quick closeout. Okay, we're almost halfway through. Or, or something with, with these. Okay. Thibodeau. So again, you have the listing of everything up here, the sales discounts and, and everything. All right. And how to close these out. There's a little key here. You guys can look at the key. Number seven. Myers Company provides the following information. Credit sales, cash sales. So yeah. So it's not as, as obviously credit, all revenues counted, so it's cash or credit type thing. You have a sales discount of 
minus 5,000. You have ret less returns and allowances, minus 11, 3, all right, which is in there. And this is the sum of two numbers, 280, 1, 2, 3, and 100, 1, 2, 3. Which is that? That's minus 16 equals sum All right, which that's your, that's your net sales. I think what did it says prepared? Yeah, so with this one, we prepared what we did here. You prepared the sales revenue, so yeah, it's good to. And what we're doing here, type thing. You prepare the sales revenue section of the income statement based on your on this information. That's it. That was your three sixty four. So let's say you're sort of rolling through all these. Uh, multi-step, single step. Yeah, so we're trying to determine, you know, what does the structure look like when you use a multi-step income statement, when you use a single step income statement, what are the structures of these things look like? You know, these particular entries. So with a multi-step, um, yeah, and the section, I did it by section. So, you know, gain and sale of equipment, interest expense, casualty for most of vandalism, cost gets sold. Okay, in the multi-step where that all goes, and the single step, uh, system uh, income statement of the representation you, only the gain on sales or revenue everything else is an expense so the, everything's more uh, divided a bit with the multi-step income statement and it's a little more complicated but it's also a little more uh, detailed a little more itemized that's the difference between those and it says well, it has five sections or single step has two, two, only two sections and like I said you guys can read through the rest of this when I, when I send this out there's numerous required name uh, numerous steps required in determining net income in a multi-step income statement, in contrast, only one step is required to complete that income in a single uh, step income statement. Okay, so you have that. Uh, number nine is Adam's company and the following reported amounts, sales revenue, returns. So yeah, we're going to go through everything. And again, you, you can't do enough. You can't do enough of these. Is my little moralization for this. You can't do enough of these income statements because like I said, what are you plugging in when someone makes an investment? You're plugging something into someone's cash flow system and what is that component? Okay, and it's this. And if you don't have this, you don't, you're not going to have a deal. <laughs> so, okay, so, so just something to keep in mind. And sure, there's arbitrage things and all that, but that's, you know, you, you always got to do a fundamental valuation uh, of what's happening. Okay, so just the initial pieces of this, revenues 510, allowances minus 15,000, discounts are zero. So this was all boilerplate. We've done this numerous times with net sales, the combination of those, okay? Is that course that's sold? Minus three, three, zero, one, two, three. That's minus three, 330,000. Uh, 3, uh, 300, uh, profit is, um, those two is 165,000 and net operating expenses minus. Okay. So, what do we do with net sales? We have that. That's A, is right there. Actually, we should center these things, I guess. Make a text. Oh, we have A plus profit, uh, B. Income from operations. Well, income from, and, and gross, the rate will figure out. Income from operations is, uh, yeah, it's just, it's got to, it's got to be this, right? It's just got to be this. Income operations and the rate down here. Actually, this was already computed, but this is just simply it wasn't computed, but the formula was there 165 over 495. That's 33 percent. You know, 33 and a third percent. The gross profit rate tells us how many cents of each sales dollar goes go to gross profit. Okay, well, yeah, if you look at this, you have 495. So, yeah, let's let's do the percentages. 
I, I did this the other day. This is not in the, uh, and I actually probably transferred though into mine. Uh, this is equals negative that divided by. All right, so what does this mean? This means this is 66% of the 495. And this will put a dollar sign in there and lock that. Yeah. Now, and you don't need all these decimal places. So the income is 11% of sales, operating expenses are 22%, gross profit is 33%, all that, okay. That's right, so the margin, the, the accounting folks margin, this margin, that. But yeah, that's what all those are. So as you look at you know, the percentage of these of the 495, you know, what goes to the cost of goods sold. So it would be this one, it would be this one, and then it would be, I think, that one. Yeah, because if you add, let's just see if, if you add those those three up, what you're gonna get. Yeah, that's it. That's you. You got to be careful, not over, over, over uh, adding stuff up type thing. Okay, that was your, uh, that was what was happening with that. Okay. So gross profit rate is 33%. But again, we did a little bit better sort of version of that there. And actually, what I want, what I should do, I'm just going to copy this. No. Like I said, it's always good when you have a sort of you know, the other, and you're thinking, yeah, you know, in class, I'd be doing something like this and say, oh, well, yeah, we should do this, we should do that. And it uh, pops up to me. So it's nice to have it here and just right away, boom, you know, make the make the change for the future type of thing. So we don't forget the the, the stuff, the artistic inspiration, which is great. I, I love really from explaining it to you guys, I think I learned as much myself. Even I've done this over and over and over and over again. There's always something to say. Hey, I look at a different way, or you know, there's a, a little a new spin on something. And I've done this, you know, over. I've, I can't believe the, the amount of time longer than most of your lives. But you know, it's it's still it's still fresh. I, I love that's why I do it. It's it's still like I'm, it's still like my first year of teaching, which I, I think is is a, is a, to me is a, to me is a tremendous time. Uh, but yeah, so you look at this. so yeah, you get the 495. Get, that's what comes in the door, and then 67 percent pays for the. Goods and then 110 pays for the operating expenses, and there's 11 percent left. So for every hundred that comes in, there's eleven dollars left. It was spent, you know, 80, 89 type thing. All right, we're up to, I think we're up to the last three now. Yeah, we're up to our last three of these. And um, this is a periodic inventory system, and, and we've worked this in class a bit. I think. Yeah, we've worked this in class. So this is the periodic system, and you've heard me say this in class a, a, a number of times. Uh, you know, you go to Walmart, and as you're buying a basketball, it's coming out of inventory, and they're recording it that day. 
type thing. So, you know, this the book's a bit dated that I'm using, but I like it because there's no mistakes in it. So if there's about uh, 60,000 in inventory. All right, let's look at the book for a second. This is number 10. Yeah, determine net purchases and determine the uh, cost of goods purchased type thing. You're supposed to start with 60, and how do you know that? Yeah, they should that should that should be stated somewhere. That shouldn't just be a, a guess. Hey, I don't, it's funny, I don't see that anywhere, but okay, we'll, we'll, we'll work with it. Purchases were 450, 450,000. You had returns and allowances, minus 13, one, two, three. Discounts, minus 8,000. And this is the same maneuver as before, is the sales discounts and returns and allowances, but we're looking at it as a as a seller now. What comes out of their uh, inventory? I, uh, as a kid, I would walk along Bluefield Avenue with my mom in Newark when I was a, a, a young, young, you know, single digit, high single digit age, age kid. And there was a place called Branch of Pools, and I rode by on my bicycle the other day, and I, I suppose it uh, has gone bankrupt or something. And uh, and it's funny. I, I looked for a lot of the, the stuff as a kid that I was sort of uh, – the music school I attended. Actually, that guy was still still in business up, up until a couple of years ago. He was still still teaching music. They were still vibrant. And he was – I saw a picture of him. He looked great. And um, all these decades later, oh boy, you know, decades, look the same decades and decades and decades later. That was something. It was a different time. It was a different time. But um, I looked at, the, at the, the pool place and they sold pools and filters and chlorine and chemicals and stuff, you know, basketballs so to throw in the pool. And, uh, you know, their inventory of pools or barbecues, they sold, uh, you know, outdoor stuff. And they expanded dramatically or, or, or merged with another retail guy doing the same thing in, in Middlesex County and other places in New Jersey. So there wasn't just one. There were about six, seven, eight, or nine of them at one time. And they had different names or something. But um, I looked, it was closed. You know, I, was, I said, oh, boy. You know, it was the, the place as a child I would you know, run into and see, oh, where the pool chemicals were, whatever it may have been. I was very, even back then, I was very into how things worked kind of a thing. So anyway, so think of, per, you know, Pool, it's something that you can relate to cars or tires or whatever. Maybe there's a, a tire place in Bluefield Avenue as a kid. I used to walk past all those different things. Where I'm rushing back to sometimes. Um, but yeah, so you have purchases of tires, let's say 450000 and then you returned a couple to Cooper or whoever you bought the tires from, that type of thing. And this is a uh, 429 that's net, that's your net purchases. And yeah, so. We use purchase returns, discounts. Yeah, there's a freight in on this. And let's just quickly remind ourselves of you know, freight in, what, what that means. Uh, shipping cost is paid by the buyer. So when you buy from Amazon, that's you're, you're paying for it. And that's piled into, because you're spending money to get whatever you're buying from Amazon, clothes or something, T-shirts, or whatever it might be. So that expense gets piled into your inventory type thing. And so the freight, it's the part of the course, merchandise should include, yeah, okay, so it's, it's all that. All right. Extra space in there. Okay. So that we have. All right. Uh, freight in is sixteen thousand. And you're not subtracting it. You're, you're adding that in. So equal sum. Okay, which is that. Now, uh, Again, I'm trying to figure out, you know, okay, yeah, here it is. Yeah, I knew, I knew that these had to be linked. It says net purchases we did, right? We're, yeah, net, there's net purchase right there, and there's cost of goods purchase right there. So I, for, I'll make that bold just for now. 
pull that and they can maybe yellow it a bit. Uh, that one. Those are the answers for this particular one. Yeah. So, folks, I apologize. But yeah, so those are the answers to this. And as I do very, usually I have the same model for a couple, uh, yeah, a couple of, uh, yeah, this is bars. Yeah, a couple of uh, questions. It says here, 90,000 at the end, 60, that's where they where they count from. So like I said, you always gotta keep, keep in mind you know, where all your numbers come from. There's 60,000, which is right there. Uh, so yeah, so costs available for sale will be the 445 that you bought plus what you started with, which is 505, and then your ending was 90, and you're left with this minus that, and if that's a little bit small. Yeah, 415 is what, what, what cost of goods sold is. This was for 10, and again, the periodic inventory system. So here, because you have the ending and the beginning inventories, and now you have net sales also, you're going to start plugging in to your uh, partial income statement. And it's gonna be one, two, three. So sales are 730, which is right there. Um, again, sales discounts, not purchases, but sales discounts and all that stuff. Zero equals this plus that. Uh, now, of course, it's old, negative right there of the 415, okay. Equals. See, so there's a lot of work to get. So, and you're going to see that as you, as you go deeper into all this, that uh, um, you know, it's it's it, what were just entries and maybe the, the, initial, the initial chapters. It's it's a lot more, you know, it's a lot more work to get to these uh, the answers. Now, you know, this is you don't have enough for net income and all that other, that other stuff. But what you do, what you can do, is take uh, that number divided by net sales, boom. 40, so yeah, 43 uh, is right there. So this comes in, and here's what's, what's cost goods sold. So this is the, the gross. And again, I prefer um, I prefer just knowing what, what, what's happening with everything <laughs> most of the time. So let's see what, what we can do here with this. This was this thing. This is G three seventy two. Part H. And so this is, get rid of the negative. Turn it on, and your check is right there. Copy. And you don't need the last one. Okay, so yeah, so 56% of, of it goes to cost of goods sold, and the other 43 is, is profit, goes profit. Okay, that's up to 11. Uh, but of course, the, the longer ones are sort of at the end here. Um, 12 is prepare journal entries to record these transactions in Jarrell's company's book, she's a periodic inventory system. 90,000 of merchants was purchased. And again, who and what uh, you, you want to understand, you know, well, that is Jarrell is the buyer. And it should say that it doesn't say that, but it should say that. I, I should make it say that. It should say that in there. Okay, drills the buyer, and they're buying now purchases, right? Instead of inventory purchases, nine hundred thousand merchandise.
which is right there. And then they return, so they bought 900,000, they returned 130. All right, 130 gets returned. And now what you do is you're gonna go to payables here, equals parenthesis, the 900 minus the 130, there's 770. Um, the discounts here are equal to the 2% times this number, which is 15.4. So yes, in terms of what you're really paying, it's the difference. That's your check. All right, so what were we asked to do here? It says make journal entries, then a purchase, fine, then a return, okay, and they paid the balance. And how that all happens in terms of a journal, you know, there it is. There, there's how it happens. Okay. Uh, discount 12%. Uh, let's see what's going on here. 12%? What is it? Oh, no, 2%. On March 12th. Okay. And I'm just reading through this. Okay. This is, and this is a temporary cow, temporary cow. Yeah. Okay. And the last one is so I, it took not even an hour, less than an hour, I think. So, and I'm debating whether to do the review problems with all this. That could be another video. Yeah, that could be another video because there's a little bit more to it. Okay, maybe I could do another video with that. I got a call I got to deal with. So, and 13 is below. Present below is a form of the worksheet presented in the chapter. Indicate what the following items appear on the worksheet. So yeah, with trial balance and what's debit, what's credit, adjustments, all those pieces there. So we have all that. Uh, trial balance, debit column, adjust trial balance, debit column. Yeah, so inventory, yeah. Trial balance, debit, adjust trial balance, debit, fine. And balance sheet. So yes, I, I, I put the structure to this stuff, you know, what's debit, what's credit. And then trial balance, yeah, cost consult, trial balance debit, and adjust trial balance debit, and income statement debit, and, and all that stuff. This is credit, credit, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so there we go. Okay, it just says which, which size of the debit or credit for all these pieces to the, to the worksheet. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, you have all your brief uh, exercise, and just maybe just to, to be thinking about this, uh, we'll maybe do another video of this, and it'll potentially be a little bit shorter. So I think you guys seem to be asking for shorter videos, so to, to some extent, satisfy that. But I can't shorten what it is. You know, it, it takes long, and there's, there's no other way. Um, Ah, here's some review questions. There's four of them. Yeah, there's four. Yeah, this I think this would be well, well, you know, to just sort of think about this again. I think I think this would be a better, uh, a better verse. So you, you have half of it. Okay, you have half of this. You have the the brief exercises. We'll get to the review exercises in a little bit. So folks, you know, enjoy watching the videos. Uh, work, please don't waste this week. Uh, study your, your packet, your, your merchandising packet questions. Uh, like th these are for the afternoon section, but certainly I'm probably going to give this to all my, my sections. But this is for the afternoon section, uh, basically, so you guys have a little bit more uh, exposure to you know, how to make these entries. And it's going to help you answer all those, your, your packet of questions, which you should be you know, very vor voraciously digging into these next few days. We're, we're giving you the time to do so. I, I don't want any excuses that, oh, the exam didn't go well or whatever. We want you, you know, 
very prepared and very ready. So I got I got to post this template to, to the afternoon classes. So that we're going to do. I'm going to shut that down. These are my answers. We'll worry about that. Like this is another time. But yeah, there's all the review questions. These are just re repeats, basically. The reviews are basically repeats. Yeah, there it is. We'll get to those. We're going to get to the reviews. Okay, folks, again, always, even by video, great seeing you and uh, having this interaction. And, uh, you know, watch this video. And you're going to have the template. You know, you can go over those, those problems yourself and, you know, try to go through the logic and try. You know, you can read the Excel like you read a textbook, okay? So please spend some time. You know, I know the weather's nice. The Yankee games are on. I watched the Angels game last night. It was on until late, late, and they, they finally won, which is good. And then the replay was on at about 7 because that's how late the, the game enters. And it was a West Coast game to start out with, which made it start later. So, okay, folks, uh, watch the videos, enjoy the baseball, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.